Good afternoon. It's me, Pat Miller, Gabby Gourmet, with my pal and feeling of Roth Living. And Chef Ben, of course, is the star. Hey, Lynn, how was Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was great, you know, very low key, just, you know, like we kind of knew it would be this year, but, you know, still got to see a um, couple members of the family. So low key, but, but great. Nice to kind of do something happy and, <laughs> you know. Yeah, please, yeah. more pumpkin bread and all that good stuff. Yeah, and then the what? leftovers, I mean, leftovers are always so good, but. The, the sandwich with a layer mm -hmm. of everything on Lots it. Of good cranberry sauce. Oh, that's my favorite part. I know, I just but love it. This week, actually, on the 10th, this Friday, I think it is, is Hanukkah. And it used, well, it still is a tradition of sweet potato or regular potato latkes. But now latkes are a staple on menu. You don't have to celebrate Hanukkah. <laughs> everybody loves latkes. Latkes for everybody. Non-fattening, fabulous latkes. So good. So good. Okay, Chef Ben Davis, who is our star. Welcome and thank you for making so many people happy. <laughs> well, I think they'd be happier if I if I did all the frying of the latkes. They would probably be the happiest. But uh, you're right. No, it's right. A, one second. You know, right behind you is Stir Crazy in the Kitchen dot com. Go to subscribe. We hope you'll like it, and you will get all the recipes each week, along with the video on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, Lynn and I give you the stage. All right, so we're ready to do latkes. You know, now if you, you're a traditional latke, you know that, that Eastern European style potato pancake, frequently just made with a little bit of onion, uh, and then we bind it together with egg, and uh, we thicken it. Um, sometimes people use flour, but if you're doing a traditional Jewish style latke, you're also using a little bit of matzo meal, right, to give it a little bit more uh, density and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously we're frying them. Um, we know a little bit about Hanukkah always is that, that festival of lights and we have the, the menorah or the Hanukkah that burns for, for eight days because the oil in the temple, uh, which was only supposed to last for a day, lasted for eight. So we're going to fry something, right? We can't. You just got a round of applause. You knew. <laughs> <laughs> so we're definitely going to fry our latkes. So we've got some Nice mutually flavored oil here, ready to go. But when we get to that point, we'll talk about frying and making sure that everybody's doing that correctly so we don't get, you know, little greasy sponges, right? We don't want that. We want something crisp on the outside, but nice and tender and soft on the inside. So um, you can make them with straight potatoes should you want to. Um, but if you wanted to make them a little healthier, maybe give them a little more flavor, um, you can use sweet potatoes. But there's always going to be a certain amount of just regular russet potato because of the starch that they provide to help oh, okay. bind this together a little bit. So you have a choice. Like I said, the, the most important thing about the recipe is that you get the ratios right. So the amount of potato to the amount of eggs and also the amount of matzo meal that you use in it. But you can vary it up by adding like I said, a certain portion of sweet potatoes. In this case, it's two parts of sweet potato and one part of regular potato if you're going that direction. And obviously if you're doing regular potatoes, you can just use 100% of the russet potato. Um, that's gonna give you the best, uh, best, best results. And then you've also got some, just some yellow onions that I've peeled and taken the core out of, just got those ready. So for every two pounds or so of potatoes, you want a single onion and it's just easier with your food processor to uh, to cut them in half. They'll fit through the feed tube a little easier. You know, my mother-in-law, um, you know, God bless her, she used to always say that, that what really bound latkes together was a little bit of blood uh, that you had yeah. in grating the potatoes by hand. <laughs> and, uh, we don't have to worry about that anymore because we can use our food processor. And I would really actually say that this is gonna give you the best consistency for your latkes if you're able to use a food processor as opposed to a hand grater. Not only will it be faster, but you'll get longer strands of potatoes, which will give you a nicer looking latke. A lot of times when you use a hand grater, it right. gets almost mushy. So, um, so we've got all these together. We're going to grate them first. And what I've got set up here is I've got all my potatoes peeled. 
uh, with my sweet potatoes and my Brussels potatoes, got my onions. And then I've got a sheet tray here, right, that is lined with either a linen towel, you want a fine linen towel, or you want some cheesecloth, right? And you want to double the cheesecloth maybe a couple of times so it's a little stronger. Um, that'll allow us to extract some of the starch from the potatoes, which are going to help bind this as well. So again, it's a little bit of a process, the prep is for this, but I think you'll find that it's not as hard or as laborious as it looks. So we're just going to grind everything with our food processor, if I can make sure it works. Well, maybe I should have the lid on the right way. That would probably be the best. Thing. Oh, that's such a challenge. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you get... If somebody is lucky enough to have like a wolf blender, you're, can you grate them in that? You really need to do it in a food processor like this, Gabby. It really makes a difference. Okay. Um, to get them... So I'm just going to put, you know, a couple pieces in the feed tube at a time. Then once I've got some of those done, I'm going to add it's some onion. Push. Great onion. Then as you're going through this process, you're going to have to, because this makes a lot, right? Because no one, you're not making latkes. If you're making three latkes, you're doing way too much work. <laughs> oh, okay. very much don't, work. don't listen to the recipe if it's, it's like latkes. It's like ravioli, it's like tamales. If you're going to make them, you're going to make a lot, right? So don't be, don't be intimidated by the quantities here, right? You're going to be able to get a lot of them out of this recipe. So now we're going to take our bowl off. And I see, yeah. I've never seen this. So we want to just kind of extract a little bit of that starch, but also we're trying to get the excess water out of our potatoes. So then we're going to wrap it up. I never take seen a bowl, that. And we're going to squeeze. Huh. Lynn, are you an expert at this? I have not. I, I made lodkas, never done that. I know. I'm sitting here. I you know, just kind of with my mouth open. Like. Yeah, my mouth and fork. Yeah, yeah. But you definitely want to let it just settle in this bowl. So you're going to take a little bit of time at this point. So we're going to now that we T -I -M -E. T-I-M-E, right? Not T-H-Y-M-E. <laughs> no herbs in your lockets, right? So now we're going to turn oh, that mixture. I'll be darned into a larger bowl. So what we've got in this bowl is like a, it looks like soup, right? It's a little bit orange from the, from the sweet potatoes, but we want to just let it sit now. So we're going to set that off to this, right here to the side. And now we're going to go back and we're going to continue to grate the rest of our vegetables. You can see why this really makes a difference, right? This really makes a difference, right? Of course, I've got to get this one down. Come on now. It's got it's doing. I don't know how I did it. It's not making noise, but it came through. I know. It almost looks like a magic trick from this side. Well, <laughs> in my life, it is a magic. I know, like it is just as good as a magic trick. <laughs> I'm looking at you your beautiful. Brain, everything. 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 If you do it in batches, right, it's because if you try to squeeze all the potatoes and the onions simultaneously, you're going to have to have just Herculean strength in order to do all of them at once. So you need to do them in, 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 in batches. But it wouldn't fit in that bowl anyway. Well, it wouldn't fit in the food processor anyway, but you can't right. just grate them all and then decide, oh, I'm going to squeeze them all now. You want to basically do it in batches. So again... Into our into our towel. They designed the cuisinart to do this. Mm -hmm. That's right, they did. Okay, so now you just again wrap up the next batch over the bowl, give it a squeeze, and you're going to get more. If you're doing just plain potatoes, right, no sweet yeah. potatoes, you're going to get more liquid. There's more water, obviously, in a plain potato than there is in a sweet potato. So and you, this you is where you should invite the children. Yeah, get some kids if you have teenagers. <laughs> yes, right. right. And they're they're gonna they're gonna reap the rewards, right? Because they're gonna get all that nice, all those wonderful potato pancakes at the end, right? So you can see this makes a lot. 
All right, so there's our batch number two. So you'll be bearing with me, right? Okay. So we're almost getting this there. This batch, how many would it make? It'll make it'll make at least probably eighteen to twenty-four potato pancakes. Oh, my kids could eat that in one bite. Just enough for my family, right? It's, it's only enough for half. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we only make them once a year because it's a That's lot. That's true. Ooh, be careful. <laughs> Again, the onion, you can add less onion if you choose to. Yeah, I, I like the onion. Some chefs like to dice the onion instead of grating it. I like to grate it. Um, but that's going to be completely up to you. As your own chef, you can choose to either grate the potato and grate the onion or dice the onion. Either one will work. Just remember that if you do dice it, it's a little slightly different texture. But it will work just as well. I just like the flavor it imparts. Remember too, that if you're doing just um, plain russet potatoes and no sweet potatoes, that the juice from the onion will help keep your potatoes from turning a dark color if you let them sit for a little while, right? It kind of acts like lemon juice. It keeps them a little brighter in their color. So to do this without a food processor, you're no. literally grating all of those. Okay. You would yeah, be you're gonna have very to tired. Soon. Yeah. Yeah, That's which is why the food processor makes up. It, it does really help. And like I said, that, um, I think I have it was done harder this. to squeeze. And, yeah, and I've done it manually, and I will tell you right now, doing it manually will you will bleed. There is no question. You're invariably gonna catch your knuckles on that grating yeah. box at some point. Yeah. All right, this will be the last bit that goes through the processor. And then so, I'll show you what we I was we're just gonna, gonna say next. a funny little side story. When my brother and I were young, um, we wanted to help my mom in the kitchen a lot. So she would just put us on chairs in front of the sink with a, you know, peeler and we just either peel carrots or potatoes until they were gone. Just, <laughs> just to have- come to my house, I hate to peel. Well, like she would just have us peel until there was nothing left just to have us helping in the kitchen. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. My kids did nothing but stand there on the chairs and ready to eat it. <laughs> it was right. that too, I'm sure. <laughs> so now we finally reached that blessed point where we grated everything, onions, sweet potatoes, russet potatoes, all grated. Now we've got them out of our processor, last in two hour. And an exhausted piece of cheesecloth. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's okay. All right. So, now our last little squeeze, and you'll see how much liquid We've actually got in our bowl here. Do you go to exercise class every day? <laughs> this is why chefs have such strong hands because they're always doing stuff like this. That's why I flunked. <laughs> hey, by the way, this is Stir Crazy in the Kitchen and this is Chef Ben. Go to stircrazyinthekitchen.com, subscribe, and you can get all the recipes and be part of the fun. And Linda right. and I will be struggling with you. <laughs> yeah, you can so, join uh, us in our... You're going to want to let this mixture just settle for a few minutes. Um, you want to let it settle because you can see that there's a liquid on top, right? There's water on top, but at the bottom, there is potato starch. Right, that's kind of just all fall into the bottom of the bowl, right? So you don't have to add that. You know, you could buy potato starch, but then you're not really exactly sure how much you want to add. So we're just gonna let that settle for just a bit, and then for this I've amount, I've never seen this either with the well, potato you're, starch. Yeah, you're never too old to learn something, right? That's I'm old and I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, we can 
we could learn something every single day. Well, I think it's fascinating because I remember throwing them all in water and then trying to drain it off. Right, right. So you can see we've got it blended here. So we've got our, it's mostly going to be orange for the sweet potato, but we've got a goodly amount of the white potato in there as well. Um, again, that's going to help kind of bind it, but also it adds its own little bit of flavor and texture that a sweet potato won't add, okay? So now we've let this drain. We're just going to pour off as much of that water as we possibly can. Huh. You're not going to have this left. But the water is not what we need. What we need is this starch. Oh, wow. Okay. So all this potato starch that's at the bottom of the bowl, we're going to scrape that with our spatula. You promise that will be there. Probably about two tablespoons. Now, if you're just using white potatoes, you're going to have a lot more. Okay. Right? Because we're using only half as much of the white potato as we might normally use because we're making these with sweet potatoes. But if you were using just straight white potatoes, straight russet potatoes, you're gonna have a lot more starch in your bowl, right? So now we've added that in to our bowl with our grated potatoes. So now what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your eggs, right? You're gonna crack in an egg, put in one egg, if you wanna do it, just kind of mix it. And then once you added that egg, you're gonna take a quarter cup of your matzo meal. Now, if you can't find matzo meal already in the supermarket, just buy some unsalted matzo crackers, throw them in the food processor, and <laughs> grind them up to okay. the The bagel deli has it all the time. Okay, so you can always find that matzo. Yeah. But I just got about a quarter of a cup, so I add a quarter cup per egg. I'm gonna add a nice pinch of kosher salt, maybe a little extra. Now you wanna just kind of stir it together so that that egg is kind of completely blended in there. And of course, at the beginning, it's just gonna look really loose and you're gonna say, well, that's not gonna hold together ever, right? But you gotta give it some time. Right? So we blend the first one in, now we do the second one. And you're alternating back and forth. And you're not mixing the egg before you put it in. No, nope. I'm just blending it into the, into the potatoes. And then we're going to add a second quarter cup of matzo meal and another pinch of salt. You know, yeah, I just really, have to go ahead. It's really important to season them as you go, so you get that salt completely blended into the cake, into the mix, right? If you if you just add it at the end, that's a very different flavor, right? For your latkes, you want to make sure that that salt is integrated into the into the blend. What was your question, Gabby? I, I just want to tell you, I do know how to cook, and I did all this, but I have never, ever seen potato like is made this way or this carefully. So the questions and my facial expression is for real, <laughs> because my way okay. is way and it, this looks so much better. <laughs> Well, I hope that it, you know, the proof will be in the pudding, right? How do they come out when you put them in the hot oil and you give them a fry and how do they hold together and are they nice and creamy and soft in the middle and nice and crispy on the outside? Mine are usually burnt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once you get that third egg in and you've got that, you know, your, your third edition of the matzah, take a handful and just push it together in your hand Right, okay. and see how it holds together. If it easily falls apart, you wanna to go to the next egg. You wanna add that fourth egg, right? Because sometimes you know the eggs are a little bigger, so they'll give you a little more binding capabilities. So test so, after yeah. three eggs. Yeah, test it after three eggs. You're gonna have a little extra matzo meal. If you got a little extra in case you need that as well. You can save it for Passover matzo balls. That's right. You can make it for your matzo balls or, you know, you can use it as a breadcrumb topping or thing. Yeah, they work great. It doesn't have hardly any flavor. Most, most Jews will yeah. tell you that matzo has virtually no flavor. So. It does. 
<laughs> in terrible taste too. But <laughs> <laughs> it's it's penance and it's kind of a punishment. Yeah. Right? Have to eat but anyway, look at this mess I've made. Okay, don't do this in your home, right? That's not what you want to do. You don't want to be making a giant mess. No, I want Ben to make them. <laughs> unless, you have, unless you have minions to come behind you. All right. Okay, so here we go. We've added all of our eggs. We've added our matzo meal. You might notice if you're stirring it, you might find a chunk of potato or onion that's a little large. You can pick that out because it's not going to cook quite the same. And again, you want to test it. Just hold it together. See how it holds when you just press it with your hand, just like that, right? So if it holds together in a bowl like that, you're good because you can press it out. Now you don't want to make them too thin. More often than not, what people do is they make their mats, their black is too thin, right? So then they kind of burn and they get ultra crispy. You want them to be about an inch thick, right? When you're when in the middle, it's going to be really important to have that middle part be about an inch thick when you make it. So I've got a pan here of really hot oil. You want to use a nice neutral oil. Like I said, you can use either, you know, uh, peanut oil or canola. You could use canola oil, you could use avocado oil, grapeseed oil, just something that has some fairly neutral flavor. So you've got these patties somewhere between, oh, I would say probably between three and four inches in diameter and about an inch thick in the middle. The oil is nice and hot. And the way you test the oil, just take a little bit of potato and drop it in. It should sizzle on contact, right? You should see the bubbles coming immediately. How high is your oil? So it's about a half an inch thick. You want to make sure that it's about a half an inch deep, um, okay. no, no shallower than that, because um, you're really frying these babies. Um, you're not, you're not, you're not just sauteing them. So and I'm there. used to seeing them done in a really flat pan, but it splatters all over the house. Well, now here, that's the, now thank you, Gabby, for leading that in, because the, the taller the sides, the less splatter you will have in your kitchen. So if you can use a nice tall saute pan like this one, then you're going to get nice, you're not going to get as much splatter all over your stove, yeah. right? So we're just going to let these... Yeah, now there's going to be little bits that float off. That's invariable. Good luck at this, right? You, want you just eat them. You know, yeah. Just eat a little crispy part. Those are for the cook, right? That's the reward yeah. the cook gets. Just remember, you won't want to overcrowd your pan so that the temperature doesn't drop, right? So don't don't do more than like three or four at a time, depending on the size of your pan. So we've got three in there, and then we've got our setup back here. So you can either use a tray with some paper towels on it, or I like to use a tray with a, a rack on it, whichever one you like. It doesn't really matter. I but think the rack is great. The rack is nice because then the, the grease falls away. Whatever is adhering to the, the latke as they come out of the pan um, will fall away now. So don't be impatient. Let them sear. Let them brown nicely on that first side before you try to turn them. Because if you try to turn them too soon, you can very easily break them. You want them to sort of form a little structure by giving them that first, you know, bit of cooking at the beginning. So let them brown nicely on both okay, sides. Okay, well, we can't side. see that from here. So you can. So you about, okay, so about you're going to let them go for at least a minute or two before you start to turn the first one. Right? Well, let that's it, not Let it cook long. together, right? A minute or two is enough? Just on the first side, and then you're going to cook it a little longer on the second side, and you might have to flip it one more time, just depending on how dark you want to make it. Okay. Gotcha. And always a good idea if you're going to do them for a group, you know, you're going to serve them a little bit later. Have an oven set at 200 degrees, right? So then you can pop your latkes once they've been cooked into that nice hot oven or that warm oven so that it'll hold really nicely until you're ready to serve them if you're not going to eat them right out of the pan. Really? Or keep your guests away because they eat them as they come out. <laughs> right, and, then, then, and then you get people who are upset because they didn't get the first batch. Or, you know, they, so I'm just going to take out some of the little crummy parts that have oh. come off the, the first batch. Right? But again, you always want to make sure that you're hearing the bubbles, seeing the bubbles in the plant. When you're cooking them, it's got to be searing 
the whole time and sizzling nicely. So don't don't worry. Um, you, know, you want it to be better a little too hot than a little too cold. Right? So just making sure that they're always got a nice bubble coming. I'm just time. waiting with bated breath to see those. You're, okay, you're going to get to taste one before I do. <laughs> Maybe. So again, I'll just give you a look. Here's the first one. As you can see, I flipped the first one over and it started to get mm. a little bit crispy on the, so on the first side. Now it's cooking on the second side. But again, you want to make them thick so that um, they are, again, soft in the middle, crispy on that exterior. Um, that's always going to be the texture that you're looking for. So, Could you um, make these and freeze them? You can, absolutely. If you're going to make them ahead and freeze them, make sure you cook them fully before you freeze them, right? So cook them fully, let them cool, right? Get them to room temperature at the very minimum, right? And then if not, then pop them in the fridge and then put them on, a, I would put them on an open tray and freeze them before I put them into a bag, right? Okay. Make sure they're frozen solid before you put them into any kind of container to store them for a, for a longer period of time. Then to reheat them, would you just kind of bake them a little bit? Yeah, then we would just put them in a nice, you know, in a nice reheating oven. Or if you're lucky enough to have a convection steam oven, you can certainly do it in the full convection steam oven. But if not a standard oven, make sure they're uncovered. Um, let them reheat um, probably at you know 300, 325 degrees. They're going to take probably anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to get nice and hot all the way through. Um, but uh, if you're going from a from a frozen state, oh, you can you should do it frozen, not defrosted. You can do it frozen. It'll just lengthen the amount of time that it'll take. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm back. getting very hungry these days. <laughs> You're killing. So yeah, you guys know that, and I'm sure Gabby knows this, but traditionally, right, whenever we are having latkes um, at Hanukkah, we're always serving them with, you know, a little bit of Apple unsweetened sauce. applesauce and a little bit of sour cream. So that's all you really need for this. Clearly, you could use them and serve them as, uh, you know, you could do like they do with some of the delis, and you could use latkes as the bread for your sandwich. You can put yeah. some pastrami between them. Uh, you can do a lot of fun things with the latkes, but obviously the most traditional way you're going to want to serve them is with the, uh, with the applesauce and the sour cream. They would so, never get further than applesauce and sour cream in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is really the traditional way to serve them. Um, here at, at this is my family's favorite. I told you, my grandson, his only, I said, what would you like for Hanukkah? Latkes by Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't realize that they were, they were so renowned, but um, again, it's, uh, maybe hey, she must ben, have talked about you're, the you're pretty darn special. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we always make these at least once a year at Hanukkah in our home. We're always having Latkes my, my, my wife's favorite things to eat. Um, you know, she uh, she doesn't eat sour cream oddly enough, so she'll just she'll just put the applesauce on and go that oh, way. Oh, me too. I don't. I think sour cream ruins. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. So we have. So uh, your wife and I have something in common. You have something very much in common. So now that we've got them nice and crispy brown on that second side, you might need to flip it one more time just to give it a little insurance cooking. Uh, but again, in this nice hot oil, they're, they're sizzling beautifully. Let me just show you what they're starting to look like as they come out. Just make sure you kind of give them a quick little shake above the, the pot so they come out. And then here you go. You got oh, it. does that look good? Right? So now as you're doing that, you've taken out one. You can now keep, keep, keep going and just keep frying your latkes until they're all cooked. And again, Gabby, if you don't eat them all that same day, let them cool completely. Um, pop them into the freezer on an, un, on an uncovered sheet tray, let them freeze, and then you can put them into the freezer, into a freezer bag and store them that way. So it's really a, a fun way. It's a, you You're know, invited obviously... for Hanukkah dinner. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you'll bring the brisket, I'll bring the latkes, and we'll be good, right? <laughs> and Lynn, you'll come too. Yep. And I'll be there to eat, just like I always <laughs> And me. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. So you can see how this will take a little while to fry all of them, but once they're done, then you... Oh, well, can, can you just pick one up and show it cooked? That is that possible? Is right there. Mm. 
Oh, it's it's matzo ball. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> Vodka perfect. I can't thank you enough. I have no idea what's coming next, but I can look at those. I can only imagine. Ben, you are spectacular. <laughs> well, Gabby, thanks. This is a lot of fun. And, you know, simple food like this is really, there's, it really is such a great reward unto itself just to be able to sit down and enjoy this with your family. Um, you are a joy, and I think you're bringing lots of joy yeah. to everybody at home at these stir crazy times. Yes, well, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> You and Hopefully I are just So shall we say thank you and yes. let you go? And it is just stir crazy. Yeah, you have no choice. <laughs> stir crazy in the kitchen dot com. Hit subscribe. And I can hardly wait. It is yeah. <laughs> Lynn, you are and I make a perfect team. We can eat. Perfect. Yeah. Love you all. <laughs> Love you all. all right. Have Bye a good day. Happy Hanukkah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. See Bye. you next week. Thank you. Much love.